Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. The Lord is with you. And as uh, many of you uh, still remember, it was just a little over six months ago that we had our 150th anniversary celebration. And uh, we took the opportunity then to uh, refocus on the vision for the church for the future. And uh, one of the major areas of emphasis was uh, just uh, presenting uh, a changeless Christ for a, a very changing world. And also at that time, we prayed that uh, there would be a, a man of God who would lead the congregation into the future. And by the grace of God, he's here with us, so we rejoice this day. Uh, this is a, a day of new beginnings, and the first hymn uh, has to do with joy, and we most certainly can't have joy on this very special day. Uh, but before we have the first hymn, we'll light the Paschal candle at this time. We have the Paschal candle lighter. Paschal candle. Amen. The Lamb of God, the light of Christ coming into the world. We sing the first hymn. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus. Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this year confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is in the book of Acts, chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance, I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending 
being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered this, the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who was called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is Revelation 21, chapters 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Congregation, please rise for the gospel. Please rise as you're able. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated for our next song.
Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today our sermon text is going to be from uh, the reading from Acts. Acts is a, a, a really a, a fun book for me anyway, I think. It uh, has a tremendous evangelistic and, uh, and mission outlook, um, and we see a lot of what was done in the early church and how God worked through those, those disciples and then the, the believers and the next generation of believers and so on and so forth. And, uh, and it's wonderful because I was reminded of, as I uh, you know, was kind of going through my, my sermon for today of, of yesterday's sermon in which uh, Pastor Castor was talking about you know, how the Word of God is constant and it and it doesn't change. It changes us, but it doesn't change. And I, and I thought, you know, that's, that's how you almost is kind of what I would say kind of a, almost a summary of the book of Acts is, is because it's a reminder of how God's word is constant and how it changes us because we are the ones that need changing, not God. So in our first lesson, or in our, you know, our, from Acts chapter 11 here, we see how uh, God is working through Peter and uh, really teaching in ways that, you know, almost seemed uh, they were uncomfortable. And, and I think that's it's, it's, a, it's a lesson that we also today can learn, um, because when God works through us, it, uh, it isn't always comfortable. And, uh, and I think sometimes even us uh, dedicated Christians that are committed to the Word of God can also feel like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I want to keep doing this, or I want to keep hearing what God's Word has to say. So we start out here. Now, now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout uh, Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, you, said you were sent to uncircumcised men, and you ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. So in the Old Testament, it was, it was uh, uh, not... You, Jews didn't eat with Gentiles. They didn't go to their homes. They didn't, they didn't, they stayed out of that because by doing so, according to Old Testament law, Jews were becoming unclean, okay? Because Gentiles, that's, that's all of us who are not a uh, Jewish background. So forgive me if you are Jewish background and I don't know that. So, but everyone else that is, is from Jewish background, um, you, you, didn't, you didn't associate with those who were non-Jews. I mean, you would maybe, you know, in the market and what, but you didn't, you didn't go to their homes, you didn't eat with them. And the Old Testament, uh, God laid out a whole long list of foods and, and things that were to eat and to not eat at all, okay? So Peter goes on a, on a trip and he uh, experiences something that, uh, again, uh, made him feel uncomfortable, but also made all the other believers around him, the other believers in, in Jesus, uh, we're also a little uh, made uncomfortable by what uh, God led Peter to do. Behold, at that very moment, uh, Peter explains his situation. Three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. There are six brothers also. These six brothers also will come to me, and we entered the man's house. He told me how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, Send to Jop and bring Simon, who is called Peter, he will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So in this event that Peter's recounting, he's at a, he's at a house and uh, um, um, he's, he's praying. And uh, while he's praying, God prompts him to say, you know, you're, you're, you need to go. There's some people have come to the house, and I need you to go with them, okay? Um, never mind that those people are not going to be Jewish, okay? But you need to go with these non-Jews to them, because I'm going to go and show you how God's word works and how God's word is active in all people, not just among Jewish people. So we see this situation. Three men came from Caesarea. And, uh, um, and then they invited, they wanted Peter to go with them and to uh, this man's house. To, to, uh, um, so they're in Joppa. They want to go to Caesarea. All right. So they go. Peter's prompted by that. And six other believers go with Peter. And then they uh, are, are accompanying these three men, these three non-Jewish men, to uh, this house in Caesarea. All right. Are you following with me there? So sorry. I'm just making sure we're, 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 we know what we're doing here. So, all right. So these six brothers, they accompanied me. We entered the man's house, and he told them how uh, he had seen an angel uh, stand in his house, send a Joppa and bring Simon, who was called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you'll be saved, you and all your household. 
As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as us at the beginning. So Peter is, you know, he's praying in this house, and then he is prompted by the Spirit to go. Six men go with Peter into uh, uh, to Caesarea, and uh, they are there to, uh, uh, to speak the word of God, this unchanging truth of God's word. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, this angel rather, is, is uh, uh, telling uh, uh, Peter what he needs to do, that he needs to go and share this truth, true word of God. So uh, Peter then, uh, he goes, uh, and, uh, um, and, and, when he, and he gets there, and uh, um, the Holy Spirit, they're praying, and they're, uh, Peter is teaching them the God's word, and then, uh, um, then the Holy Spirit comes on them, as we see in other situations and events recorded in the book of Acts, where then uh, um, the Spirit comes upon them. And uh, um, it's at that point then that Peter and these other six Jewish believers, they recognize how God's word is for everybody. They recognize that God's word isn't just for the Jewish people, that the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, receive God's word. Okay? Now, we're kind of focusing a lot here today on our text about uh, Jewish people and non-Jewish people, okay? But the same is today. It's the exact same thing, that we, we have God's word, okay? And God's word is for all people. We know that, okay? Now, we've only been in this plane since last Friday, um, and so, uh, uh, but, you know, driving around town, we see that there's a lot of uh, different uh, ethnic restaurants. Okay, now, I don't know the, the spiritual well-being of anybody in this city, okay, or in this community, but I can tell that there's obviously believers here, because you've all gathered today in God's house to receive God's word and to receive what he uh, wants to offer you today. But we don't know all of, the, all of these other, other peoples, okay? Now, we don't follow the same uh, um, uh, uh, dietary rules in the Old Testament because God, uh, Jesus, has fulfilled all of that, and there's no, no need for doing that. We now receive from God freely what he gives to us, and, of course, he tells us, just as he told Peter and these disciples, that the word of God is for all people. So it's for all the people in all of these, I'm going to use all these, you know, ethnic restaurants that I see around town. Some I don't even know what they are because I'm not sure what language that is. And so that's fascinating to me of what kind of diversity is here. Pastor Salam was here yesterday at, our, at my installation, and, you know, he was talking about a ministry to Muslims and some other, other ministries. And so the, the word of God is for all people, okay? Well, then, of course, I, you know, and I've, I've thought about this too quite a bit. And even when we were in rural western Iowa, it was farm country. And, I, you know, I think, well, how do you, how do you share the word of God with, with you know, with anybody? Well, Okay, I, I will tell you up front, I don't have a magic pill, I don't have a magic formula, okay? But we do have this, okay? We have this, the Word of God, right here, in audio form, in print form, and in variety of other formats. And of course, it's available in a variety of other languages. So it's not just, it's not just the language that we speak today, okay, uh, uh, here, whether, whatever other language that might be. So as God was using Peter... To, to share this word so that more non-Jewish people, more people in that time and that place would know the word of God, God is also us using his word today so that more people will know God's word. And, and I mean, you know, maybe it sounds like I'm preaching to the choir, but we're using the, the, are the events recorded here in scripture to, to teach us and remind us of the importance of, of God's word. In, uh, in Iowa, I... Uh, um, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll bring this here to this new ministry, and so uh, I'm sure after some time, maybe you'll get tired of hearing me say it. But I, I hope you don't get tired of hearing me say it. But I would constantly tell people the importance of reading your word, reading the Bible, listening to the Bible, or, or engaging it with some way or another in which God's word is constantly getting into your heart, soul, and spirit. Because that's how God works through us. He works through us through his word. He works through his, through his body and blood and holy communion. He works through us through baptism to give us life, to strengthen our faith and encourage us. And that's what, what the, the angel told this non, this Gentile man, go send for Peter, and he will tell you the words that will save, that, were, that, are self, that lead to salvation, that are for eternal life. And, 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 I, and, and that's, what, that's what it's about. That's why, that's why Pastor Greg spent uh, the last several years preaching God's word to you. That's why the pastors, all the other pastors in our congregation here have done this in the past. And that's what I've, I've been called here today, too, as Pastor Buss was saying yesterday, to, to bring the word of God to you, to remind us 
because I was, as I was told at seminary one time that uh, uh, the reason the pastor preaches every Sunday is because everyone in the congregation has amnesia the rest of the week. <laughs> and then you come back to be reminded of God's grace and forgiveness because we live in a world. I mean, the fact that I can see a variety of things going on around as planes, it's not all good. You know that. We don't live in a perfect world anymore. We live in a world that has been tainted with sin, but God gives us his grace and mercies. We come forward, as we did at the beginning of the service, as I understand from every, you know, every worship service, we confess our sins. We come forward after a long week of, of struggling through our day and our work and our lives, and we, we confess our sins and receive, receive God's gracious forgiveness. And then we move forward, and then we receive from God all that he wants to give us. We sing praise and thanksgiving through the hymns and the liturgy and, and what, and then we receive his word and his sacraments to strengthen our faith and to remind us all that he has done for us, but not just for us, not just for us who are in this building today, but for all people of this plains and all people of the Chicago area, because all people need to be saved. God desires for all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth that there's only one way to heaven. And you know that one way is only through Christ. If it's not through Christ, as Dale, uh, Pastor Castro was saying yesterday, then it's then this is for nothing. We need to go home and, and do something else on Sunday morning. But we come and get, we receive God's word, and we hear the words that give us life. We hear the words that, that give us uh, assurance of our salvation. We don't have to, well, you know, hem ha, I don't know, is it gonna, whatever. No, we know, because this is a solid word. This word doesn't change. You and I change. You and I have different emotions and ideas and opinions all the time, but God's word never changes. Peter was told, and the man was told, this Peter will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. And that, that word is for us, too. So read your Bible. You're going to hear me say this a lot. Okay, so uh, uh, don't close your ears on that, okay, because it's important. Read your Bible. Listen to your Bible every day. And then also engage with it. Engage in, in uh, the Bible study after church or, or during the week um, or some other time. And, and chew on it. And you know what? If you don't know where to start, you call me up because I'm happy to engage with people. And, and uh, that's one of the things I love doing. I mean, that's part of the job of the pastor is to encourage the people in the word of God. To speak the truth of life to you and to encourage you. But to dialogue in it. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean I have all the answers. But God's word has all the answers. God's word is true. It is right. It brings salvation. And that's what we need to hold on to. And that's, that's our sure confidence in an unchanging, in a changing world, we have the unchanging truth of God's word. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds, found in the one true faith of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us uh, rise as we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed.
Let me continue with the prayer. Precious Lord, guide and direct each of us in our first step to be missionaries and educators, speaking your word of truth in love, bringing people to faith through our witness and deeds of kindness. Bless Pastor Labou and his efforts to train us up on how that we might best use our gifts and talents to impact the community around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, who created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, continue to watch over us as a father watches over his children, lest we fall prey to the devil's divisive schemes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, work in and through us that in all of our activities, our thoughts and words, we would bring honor and glory to Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God of all knowledge and wisdom, grant your discernment from on high. To those who govern us, we pray especially for the Biden administration, where wisdom is needed in making sensitive and crucial decisions. We ask that you would uh, bless them in the efforts to bring about greater peace in this world, for the strengthening of and unity within this world, which is pleasing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Spirit of the living God, instill within us the desire to live a holy life so that others would see more fully your love reflected in us. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious God, may you continue to bless our nation's leaders, those who are at the border, where there's so much in the way of chaos, grant uh, wisdom and strength that there would be a greater measure, measure of security taking place, that there would not be uh, major ill effects in the future. Have mercy uh, on the, those who are at the border, that they might be able to, uh, to show a measure of strength, but also grace. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord, for the situation in Ukraine. We ask that you would uh, break the strongholds of the evil spirits upon the leaders of Russia, that you would uh, also bless efforts when it comes to relief, to release to so many people, the millions of people who have been uprooted. We ask that you would work a blessing through all of this as only you can do. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And risen Lord, refresh those who are weary, those who have experienced loss, those afflicted by chronic illness. We pray for Beth Barco, a good member of this church down in St. Louis who broke her foot. May you uh, allow the healing to continue. Also, Lord, we pray for Edith Stobbs, for Donna Pizzelli. Thank you that she's doing better. We also ask for your grace upon grace be upon Bernice Timmerman, Walter Krauss, who's not been, uh, who's really struggling, and his wife, who's only vigil. Grant special peace to that family. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, we pray for Ewald Howard, who's seeking to adjust in the nursing home, who's lonely. May he uh, find solace in you, but also the support of others. Thank you again that Marlene Johnson is with us. May you continue to strengthen her. The Marshmen, as they both know of weakness, have mercy. Also, Lord, grant your grace to Mary Phillips as she adjusts to the nursing home. 
We thank you that Keith uh, Mitch is with us, and may he be further strengthened and along with his wife. And also we pray for Eric Bobka, for Liliana Donovan, for Jack Shen, for Bob Connor, for Phil Shimke. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays. James Bednars, Bob Remitted, and it's Pastor LeBou's birthday. May you bless him and these men with many more birthdays, and may they give glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy. And now, Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Earth is in heaven. <coughs> give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. Thine, Thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. 